Hey guys, we're back. I don't really even know what to call this one. It wouldn't really be a tech talk. Um, but what we're doing, I have my friend Mike from here in Dayton with his beautiful ZX-10R. And Mike has been kind enough to allow us to use his bike as a guinea pig, <laughs> not only for product testing and development, but uh, long-term testing. So um, I don't want to ramble on. Mike, I'll just let you uh, tell us a little bit about your bike and, and okay. how you use it. Well, it's a, essentially a 100% street bike. Um, doesn't have any track miles on it. The what, only, what year is this? 2016, right? Yes, sir. Um, the so only miles outside of the street are here on the dyno. Okay. Um, clocking just over 16,000 miles now. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just a fun bike. Yeah. Um, well, I know it has our Predator exhaust. I know it has our Power Commander and our mapping. Um, and then uh, Mike was interested to go over to the the Sprint, um, the F1 filter, mm -hmm. and that was a little over 5,000 miles ago. Yep. Uh, and you had the uh, you had the P08 in there before that. I had the P08. Right? Um, I think put about five or six thousand miles on that, and then switched over to the F1. Okay. And I think we've got about 5,300 miles on it since we installed that last. And have you done any maintenance on it? Nothing to it. All right. So what we're going to do this the, this this how we like to do it. Um, we're going to go ahead and make some passes on it to see where it is, and then we're going to we're going to pull the uh, we're going to pull the airbox apart and pull the look at the filter, um, see if there's five thousand miles. Who, who knows what all could be uh, could right. be trapped in there? Yeah, who knows? Um, so we will uh, we will start. And uh, one last thing, Mike. I notice, and it's really subtle on this bike, but I notice you've got some. Uh, you're, you're adding carbon fiber as, as you sort of go here. Yeah, bits and pieces here and there. Um, basic stuff for right now. I've got uh, heel guards, um, chain guard on this side, uh, sprocket cover, and uh, little dash panels up here. And uh, the front intake and stuff is all 100% carbon fiber. And a few more pieces in store, but Try not to go crazy with it, but it's kind of hard to, hard not to. Well, you uh, you do a lot of miles. Is it basically around town? I, I know you go on some trips and things too, right? I'd say it's a pretty good mix. Um, I do a lot of uh, a lot of trips several a year um, that are easily 500 plus miles. Um, a lot of that highway getting to and from locations, but I would say um, a lot are also just around town, country roads around here. Try and find as many turns as I can. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot around here. Um, and I noticed you've got you've got some uh, interesting hardware hanging off the bike here. Yes. Um, yeah. The uh, the last time I went down to Deals Gap, I had about a 60 pound book bag on my back riding from here down to North Carolina. It gets pretty heavy on a, on a bike like this, so um, I opted to get some saddle bags and. Um, that's the uh, the hardware that we're seeing is what has to remain on the bike. We'll show you some photos of that. It's a it's pretty cool. Um, I don't remember which oil are you running? Uh, Cowie. The Cowie. Full synthetic. Full synthetic the yep. 1040. Good oil. Cowie um, filter. And then fuel. I, I think you just went and fueled up here. What'd you put in? 89 shell. God, I love a guy that pays attention to the rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and. Uh, well, that's it. We're gonna make some. Uh, we're gonna make some runs. Uh, check the tire pressure. We've got her strapped down here, and um, this bike's always run really well. It, it, it's always sort of. It's always sort of surprised to be on the dyno because, you know, we're in the business, right? So a lot of our bikes will just sit there and we'll throw them up on the dyno, and we expect them to be consistent. But with all the different kinds of use and terrains and. Um, you know, fuels and all the different things that goes on. This bike has been refreshingly consistent it in, has. in our testing over the years. I mean, it's uh, so enough yammering. Let's let's go see what this thing makes. <laughs>
check this out. Rolled in on this <laughs> brisk fall day. Um, and it looks like we're right at just made two runs at 189 and some change. Now if you look, the humidity isn't is definitely not bad. It's not like summer. But the correction factor, the dyno is actually correcting down, and I'm sure it's primarily because the temperature in the room is so is so cool. If I get rid of this and then throw up the last run, let's pick it from when you were here before. You can see we're really we're really close. Um, the correction factor was was higher there, like I said. So we're actually we're actually correcting down. Just for giggles, let's look at something here. All right, so uncorrected. They're right over top of each other. So yeah. Anyway. Um, we'll go ahead and put it back to the SAE correction scale and pull this thing apart and check out, uh, see what the filter looks like after 5,000 miles. It's automatically putting in more fuel than it would have if, if the conditions weren't as cool and the optimum air fuel ratio to make power is a little leaner than that. So it is what it is. We're, we're splitting hairs here. The bike is right where it was. Yeah. So let's go ahead and pull it apart and check out this filter. Alright. You know that additional rich fuel mixture filter may be dirty. Could be. You got a point. Oh, yeah, those things. Which, I mean, I guess it should be dirty after 5,000 miles. <laughs> Kawasaki. This is a prop rod. Suzuki gives it to you with almost all of their motorcycles. We use it on the cows all the time. That'd be nice to have. Mike does a lot of maintenance on his bike. I forget. They all run together after a while. I'm not getting old or anything. Okay. Smells fuely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's look. Uh, look at that, all kinds of oil and debris up in here from somebody going out and having some fun, wringing her neck. But uh, I don't see, uh, let's look here, it should be interesting. Huh, not bad. A little bit of pollen, some bugs. Oh, all right, you gotta, you seem to have a flashlight down in here. You got that? Yeah. All right. So if we look here, this is the clean side of the filter. That's the dirty side. You can see all the, I don't know if you can see down in there, but all the bugs and dust and grit and grime and crud. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of junk. Oh, yeah. And it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, Plenty of uh, plenty of debris catching. This side looks really good. Now, <laughs> this is one of the best parts of a sprint filter. Let me show you how you clean this thing. All right. So the filter goes in this way. And all we're going to do is take some compressed air, and we're trying to blow this stuff out of it. You know what I mean? Let's see. There we go. There we go. All right. Compressed air. And, and watch here. You can, you can actually watch it blowing the crud.
there's a bug. And I don't know if you can see, but there's all kinds of fine dust that's just being, we can see it leaving the back side of the filter. You can actually see stripe marks from where you've hit it with the compressor <laughs> versus where it has Oh yeah, you can, can't you? There you go, there you go. Anybody want some dust? Pretty nice. A couple more spots down in the corner. Trapped a lot of stuff, didn't it? It did. All right. Now, in the old days, you'd have to, oh, geez, wash all this out with a, a special shampoo, let it dry oil it up, um, and then once you oil it, it very effectively chokes off the airflow into the engine because you just oiled the filter. That does help a cotton filter catch more debris, but with the Sprint filter, we're good. Now, if you can pull this back up, Mike. A lot of, a lot of guys don't understand. They'll open up their air box and say, hey, there's, you know, it's, and we're not even gonna leave this stuff. But all this shiny in here, this bike, the, uh, it evacuates the crankcast va crankshaft vapors up through this little hole and it all goes up and it gets in and, it, and your engine basically digests the vapors off the bottom side of your pistons and blows it back out. My sure, do you want to clean this out or just probably not a bad idea while we're here? Yeah, if we can uh, we can get a little bit out since we got it open. the weight of the June bug? No. Alright. And now we can come over here and we can just sort of wipe this oil down. But it's it's gonna come back up. What racers will do is they'll disconnect that and send it into a catch can. You're a street guy. It's normal. That's what happens to the bike stock. Um, the stock paper filters, though, get saturated with the oil and it clogs up their flow. So just something to remember. Now, we always have questions. You know, what about, what about dust? Well, you're going to get, you're going to get dust. No filter can stop everything. Um, and quite frankly, if you're one of those people that wants the absolute highest filtration for your bike, don't put it in aftermarket filter. Just use your stock stuff. Mike, tell, would you tell these guys what your profession is? Um, I, right now I'm a project manager, but was a tool designer and engineer. So the engineer here, are you okay with the results that we got? Very happy. Nice, 5,000 miles of all kinds, I'm sorry, I'm making you hold this up, oh, all right. of all kinds of different different conditions um, it gets pretty dusty around here in the yep. you know especially in the summertime you got construction yeah um, a lot of road work and your road your ride to work is pretty but it can get a little yeah it can get a little grueling a lot of farming and stuff so there's a lot of dust kicked up from that on yep. a regular basis so um, you like what you see I'm happy with what I see it looks good now didn't see a whole lot of outside debris around the, the no. throttle bodies or anything like that it was just the and, and this was we we did the math uh we 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 marked down the mileage for this bike before we switched over to the f1 um so we know it's right at 5200 miles you didn't maintain it at all this is the first maintenance first since we put the f since then. put the uh the f1 filter in which is a 
uh, it's a really, really high flow, high performance filter. So, and it obviously does a really nice job of keeping crud out of your engine. Yeah. Now we were talking. Um, we can see that the air fuel ratio now versus what he was last time was a little bit richer. Well, we had a filter that was doing its job, catching debris, um, catching sand, catching dust. Now we're gonna put it back in, see whether or not the power changes after cleaning it. Oops, sorry, Mike. And we'll also see whether the air fuel ratio changes. Fits real nice. And uh, for those of you that are wondering what the really trick stacks are, those were some prototype things that uh, we tried on his, on Mike's bike. Liked them, so Liked left them. them in. It wasn't something that we wanted to uh, really offer to the public. They're super cool, um, and maybe we'll get around to it, but we, we're we still in the middle of doing all the testing, so hopefully we can get something like that here to you soon. So I've actually had people ask, hey Brock, why don't you just take these off? Well, you can. But basically what these are, vent hoses and, and overflow hoses. So if you're putting gas in your bike and you accidentally overflow the tank, if you don't have these hoses attached, it'll dump gasoline all over your engine instead of going down the whole hose and going onto the ground, which of course isn't good either, but it's better than uh, the, the problems that you could run into with an engine covered with gas. <laughs> so what we basically did, we pulled up his file, uh, Mike's file from previous, his, bike, his file from now, um, SAE correction factor and like I said as you can see here that that's a basic I mean it's a dead ass overlay from from 5200 miles when we do it uncorrected um, when you use the SAE scale apply. okay all right so when we when we check it on the SAE scale you can see um, the correction factors are different there's the big thing. I mean, it was we've got 10%, about 10% more humidity, which I'm sure had an effect on these numbers up top. But also, if we look here, um, the air fuel ratios are a little bit different. So we cleaned out the filter. Um, we're going to run it again and see what we get. Okay. So for those of you who are wondering what was going on, when you put one of these bikes up on the dyno, the front rear wheel, front speed, or we, the front wheel speed and the rear wheel speed don't match, and that can cause the instrument cluster to sort of um, act funny. I just put the bike in fifth gear with the engine turned off, held the throttle wide open, and turned the key on. And uh, Ghoul, which we had we had forgotten to mention it, <laughs> these bikes will not run correctly and to their fullest potential without a without a flash so we work with Don Ghoul on this this is one of his mortify flashes this allows you to to reset the dash panel so you can see those little runs we made were about six miles we just cleaned the filter um, I couldn't even see the uh, I couldn't see the, the the mileage before now if you don't have the user reset that means you have to follow the I call it the secret handshake have you ever done it? it yeah, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> could, could we get a... <laughs> it's, it's so you gotta, you gotta, you've got to go for three rides over a certain speed, 25 miles an hour the whole time. For, I think, 15 minutes each ride. Right, and then cycle the key, turn it on, do it again. Last time I did it, before we had the user reset on the Z900RS, it took me 45 minutes before it would finally clear up on the dash. Um, we just did this in seconds. Talk about an absolute lifesaver. Um, and now we're back at it. We can see where we are. Go and <laughs> the auto, the auto shift will work now. The blipper will work at least until the, the bike flips out again and says, "No, you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing." So anyway, throw this back together. And, okay. We're all back together. We were doing a lot of talking. 10.58 was our last run. It's 11.40 now. We could, we could do it in much quicker than an hour, but we were talking motorcycles and cool stuff. It's um, easy to lose track of time when you're doing that. Exactly. So we are back, and basically what we're looking for, that filter had quite a bit of dust in it, 
So the big question is, is did it still allow enough airflow into the engine to make peak power, even though it's been, and I'm not getting on you, Mike, 5,000 miles. That's, that's, that's a pretty long distance, especially going right into Tennessee and back and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah. So it was dirty, but the filter did what it was supposed to. It kept the stuff out of the engine, and now we're just going to see if we can increase the performance a little bit after blowing it off with the, uh, blowing off with the air gun. So let's see what we get. Basically, we're going to compare to before we clean the filter, the last, the last pass before we cleaned it. So we're going to leave this one, and then we're going to go in here and try our the one we just did. And if you see, they are direct overlays, um, except for up here at the top. We've got we got a little bit of a of a horsepower gain. Well, four horsepower is more than a little bit. Um, but all the way up the curve, everything stays the same. So what does that mean? Even though there was quite a bit of stuff. In that, in that filter, mm -hmm. a lot of dust, a lot of grunge. Um, when we, it still flowed enough to keep this bike running almost, almost exactly the same, yeah. um, which is pretty impressive. That's one of the things about having a high flow filter. If you, even if it gets blocked up, or partially blocked up, you still get your performance out of it, which is really nice. And then if we go back over and compare. And it, this really isn't a good comparison because the conditions are different. This was the last filter, or last pass we put on it beforehand. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a difference, but, I, but I'm telling you, my experience tells me that the difference in humidity here and correction factors, uh, that's, really, that's really what we're looking at. And, and also, so, so look at the difference in air-fuel ratios. They just don't change that much. Um, We've got, we've got different conditions in the dyno room, so the bike's doing what the bike wants to do for these conditions. Um, pretty damn consistent. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. And certain things change. And, and you know it sounds silly, right? But the difference between a summer blend gas and a winter blend gas could be that and well, right, more. Right at uh, that point where they're going to be yeah. starting to switch over to that. So uh, we'd have to sit back here and... Uh, and, and you know, it, I mean, there's a sizable difference in the air fuel ratio here. I know that I could go in here, adjust the power commander to lean this thing out um, to get some additional power out of it. That's not what we're here for. We're here to see whether or not the long term test of the filter worked out well. And uh, I think this is really good. I, I'm extremely happy with it. Okay. Over 5,300 miles. So just a few horsepower drop. And with this being a 100% street bike, that's oh, yeah. nothing that the old. <laughs> but dyno will notice exactly that's all that's all uh so yeah I'm, I'm surprised there was quite a bit of stuff in that filter i'm surprised we didn't get uh i'm surprised we didn't get more to tell you the truth but it you know it is what it is dyno doesn't lie we did it did it all yeah i mean that is it's really really not i mean talk about talk about splitting hairs yeah so if nothing else, my lesson learned by seeing the amount of dust that came out of that thing is clean it more than every 5,300 miles. <laughs> exactly. Um, just, uh, just curious, not trying to put you on the spot, what was the last time I had an oil change? Uh, it's been about 2,500 miles. Okay. So All right. I, I try and stay very consistent stay with that if that. possible. Yeah. I really try not to go over 3,000, but it's usually about 2,000 when I try and change them. Well, it's a, it's a good running bike. I mean... 100, 191, just rolling it up here with no tuning. Um, 
really happy with that. So I guess so you you we put your we put your F1 back in. <laughs> yep. Pretty happy with the results. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we're just going to keep so you guys know we're going to keep doing this. That's what long-term testing is about. Um, test the bike, try to try to make the conditions or the the bike setup as similar as we can within, you know, within reason. We're not trying to alter any of the results. We just want to make sure that we get consistent testing and if Mike's willing to come over here and Spend his time and oh, absolutely a uh, and a morning to get some get some tests on it. I think we're good. We'll keep, we'll keep you informed. So, till next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We'll see you then.